agree with this ranking? Stephen A. Smith, you well know my history on this show. Almost since Andrew Luck was drafted, I have had issues with what I call the premature coronation of Andrew Luck, and I've nicknamed him since his rookie year, Andrew Locke, as in Locke First Ballot Hall of Famer. I'm not seeing that yet, but despite all that, even I, as the Luck hater, 92nd? 92nd, he fell from 7th to 92nd, and this is a vote of players. It's a little hazy to me. Not sure how many voted. Though I, I don't get it because I just don't get it. By mere virtue of the, of the position he plays, the value of the quarterback by far over any other position in football, Andrew Luck cannot fall from 7th to 92nd. Now, just to keep this in perspective, my hate in perspective, which is just pure objectivity. I'm going to repeat it again at the risk of another 15-yard penalty for piling on poor Andrew Luck, who obviously got hurt last year, lacerated kidney. I hope he comes back 1,000%. But his rookie year, he was second in total turnovers to Mark Sanchez, really. Mr. Butt Fumble, second in total turnovers to him. His third year, he was second in NFL total turnovers to your favorite target on the show, Jay Cutler. Last year, number one in the NFL in turnovers per game was Andrew Luck. He only played seven of them before he got hurt and beat up. But number one in turnovers per game, Andrew Locke, first ballot Hall of Famer. His QBRs over the four years have fallen from 67, which is pretty good, to 64 to 62, to last year 48. Not very good. He is regressing. So I think I've been right about this to have some doubt about an obviously potentially great player who has not been great. He's been a turnover machine since the day he stepped on an NFL field. I don't really get it. But Stephen A., even though his overall record, including the playoffs, is 38 and 23, I also think he has benefited greatly from the division he has been able to play against. Because against his division, that AFC South, he is 17 and 2. He lost two games against his division his rookie year. That was opening day at home against Jacksonville, which was a huge upset. And then that year he also lost at Houston. Since then, he's won 14 straight games against the division that I think by any measure, by any opinion, I think it's getting better. I think Jacksonville's gotten a lot better. Oh, yeah. Maybe Tennessee's gotten a little better. Houston looks like it should get a, quite a bit better, you think, with Brock Osweiler. So all of a sudden, as Andrew Luck gets back next year, his competition, two games against each of those teams each year, is going to ratchet up quickly. So I say good luck to Andrew Luck, but I do not think he's the 92nd ranked player in the NFL. Your thoughts? Well, it's nice to see you exercise some level of objectivity in that regard. I'm always I mean, it is a miracle. Andrew miracles do happen. <laughs> yeah. Miracles or whatever. Mm -hmm. miracles, miracles absolutely do happen, and clearly that's what's taking place today, and I love how you try to fix the narrative. Uh, you know, we saw Andrew Locke Hall of Fame when everybody's talking about what he's going to be at the end of 15 to 20 years where you're judging him by year two because the ultimate contrarian that you are, let's make sure that we put out there that I was first to say because RG3 should have gone ahead of him and blah, yeah. blah, 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 yeah. blah. Oh, stop it. Here's mm -hmm. the reality of the situation. In the end, Andrew Locke Definitely did not have an impressive year last year. The kidney, the abdominal issues, we all know that. Uh, plus, he was turning the ball over even before that, no question. Let's also keep in mind, Skip, you got new receivers. You still had T.Y. Hilton, but you, you got Andre Johnson. You had Frank Gore in the backfield. You got Pep Hamilton that's out there coming into this year. There's six new coordinators or six new folks that will be working under Chuck Pagano. After Chuck Pagano and Grigson put their heads together and mended fences with whatever was going on. So let's take that into consideration, Skip. You're talking about six new assistant coaches that's going to be on the team this year, which means that they weren't really that great last year. 
Pep Hamilton was gone. Fired prematurely and unfairly, according to both you and I. Yep. Just eight games into the season when they were three and five and their offense was ranked 16th in the NFL. So you got Pep Hamilton, you got six additional C assistant coaches uh, who are now out because you got a new a, a new breed of individuals. And in order for Grigson and Pagano to remain in Indianapolis, they had to put their heads together, uh, 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 you know, along with you know, the, the, just the, just the paragon of virtue that is Jim Ursay, okay? So these are all the conditions that Andrew Luck has had to work under. Ursay, down to Grigson, to Pagano, to the assistant coaches. Seems like, if not dysfunctionality, certainly friction was taking place all around him. Combine that with his health issues, and it's entirely plausible why he would have the problems that he had last year. And so now that Pagano's got a four-year extension. Now that Griggs has got his three-year deal into that, I don't know how that happened, okay? And you got six new assistant coaches, and Ersay seems to be on the same page with them. I think it's preposterous that nobody takes that into consideration. Or the person who ever wrote this for the NFL Network, uh, I, you know, I, that, that would label him 92nd by virtue of the fact that he's a starting quarterback in the NFL. I mean, hell, I wouldn't even put Jay Cutler at 92nd. You understand? So I'm certainly not going to put Andrew Luck there. And I just think that it's important to recognize some of the things that he was working with or were working against him in terms of things not being necessarily ideal for a quarter, for, uh, ideal conditions for a quarterback to be working under. The fact that that got ignored by whoever wrote this for the NFL Network the players, is Stephen beyond me. I'm going to have to talk to my man Primetime. Yeah. Stephen A., the players or, voted yes? on this. The current players voted on this. Player ranking. vote. It was a all well, they, well, yeah. well, they should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed of themselves. They should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> well, I'm going to say it out loud and proud. Yeah. They should be ashamed of themselves. You understand? Because it makes no sense whatsoever why they would elect to do that. And, and obviously they play the game so they know more than you or I. But I'm wondering about their level of objectivity. Because this guy comes into the league as the number one overall pick, goes to the playoffs his first three years, advances each year before regressing last year. And somehow, some way, players are going to label him 92nd? In what world? In what world? Yeah. And it's ridiculous. Think of this, Stephen A. Talk about devaluing the quarterback position. So now we know number 100 through number, what, 91? Is that yeah, how it works? Yeah, and then they go. Yeah, okay. So, so we know that Derek Carr was ranked 100th and Luck 92nd. Those are the two quarterbacks there. We, we also know that... Only 15 quarterbacks made the top 100. So my point to you is, my question to you is, wait a second. If, if only 15 made the top 100, that means, theoretically, 17 other starters, though some teams are hazy at who their starter is. Yep. But let's just say for the sake of argument, 17 other starters didn't make the top 100. So I tried today to take last year's QBR rankings and go through it and see who you know, again, we already know who two of the quarterbacks are. So to find 13 other quarterbacks to make the top 100 and see who got left out. And I don't have time to go through it for you, but just trust me, a lot of big names are going to get left out where you're going to say, he didn't make the top 100. I'm with you on Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler is in at least in the 90s or the 80s. He's a quarterback. He's too valuable. Jay Cutler was good enough last year. To, to be farther, it, just by virtue of his position, you cannot devalue the quarterbacks in these rankings. Well, let, the, the other thing that we have to point out here is that it says the top 100 players of 2016. That means the season to come. If you said the top 100 players of 2015, looking back, then you could make a legitimate argument that Andrew Luck didn't even deserve to be in the top 100 okay. because yeah, of how awful he way. looked because of the injuries and things of that nature. All right. But when you say top 100 in 2016, looking ahead, you're talking about potential. And how in God's name can you come up with 91 players in the NFL that has more potential than Andrew Luck? That makes no sense. Okay, let's just it take, seems to me yeah. that there's an agenda going on I there. That don't make no sense to me. Okay. Look at who's 91st, Travis Kelsey. He's a fine player. He made his first Pro Bowl last year. Had a terrific year for the Kansas City Chiefs. But if I polled 32 GMs today and I said, I'm going to give you a choice going forward, Andrew Luck or Travis Kelsey, what do you think the vote would be? It, it, it would be 32 to nothing for Andrew Luck. I mean, it just would be. 
I, as objective as I am about Andrew Luck, that, that's laughable to me. So, so this is laughable, and I don't know exactly how many players voted yep. or what the definition was. Mm -hmm. Was it value going forward? Was it just off last year? I don't know, but like Stephen A. Well, I'm not going. I'm, I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not going to knock it but so much because if we have a right to give our opinions, the players have a right to give theirs. But at least we attach our name to it. I want to know who the hell put Andrew Luck at number 92, and I want them to justify it. That would be very nice. Specifically, names. Give me names. Maybe, you know what? Maybe they've been watching too much first take. Is that oh, possible? Oh, gosh. Yeah, you do infiltrate into mm. people. Uh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Mm. No, no. Because if they were watching first take, they'd put their <laughs> names to it. You can accuse us of a lot of things. <laughs> You can't accuse us of hiding. No, and I'm gonna speak for myself here. I ain't hiding from a damn soul. You, you've, you've never been anonymous on this show one time. <laughs> never. We've never shown you in silhouette never. talking, right? No. He's only anonymous at other <laughs> times. No, but I agree with Stephen A. If this was about 2015, uh, I get it. But 2016, actually, I'm looking for actually. Actually, Molly, I would interject there and would tell you, with all due respect, for the first time in this show. You have been factually incorrect. Oh. I'm never anonymous. Oh. I hide behind nothing. Oh. I say what I say. I mean what I mean. I got it. I got it. I, I agree. Thank uh, you. I'm not sure she said yes. that, but it's okay. okay we, we got it. We, we will leave it there. Yep. <laughs> All right. Coming up. The Heat it. have yes. officially declared Chris Bosch's season over, but is there something more going on here? We'll break this situation down next. Stay here.